Welcome to our Good Friday worship service. We have tasted the goodness of the Word of God, and yet we often fall away from it, crucifying Jesus anew. Again and again we tell the story, and again and again we find ourselves here in the story. For as often as necessary, let us relive it, so that with God's help, we will no longer repeat it. Holy God, as we journey through this familiar story, help us to understand it anew. Show us, O oh God, where and why we find ourselves here again and again, and move us to the more just future. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. Please join in our opening prayer. Christ Jesus, we open our hearts and minds to you. For these moments, we lay aside all else that consumes us and bring ourselves fully into your presence. As we follow your footsteps toward the cross, we pray that you will bless this journey of remembrance and all who walk it with you. Be with all who are persecuted, broken, and weary this night, and give them the hope of your blessing, even among the darkness that lies ahead. Come, Lord Jesus, guide our steps. Amen.
first station, Jesus prays in the garden. Matthew 26, 36 to 46. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Bethesman. And he said to his disciples, sit here while I go over there and pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be grieved and agitated. Then he said to them, I am deeply grieved even to death. Remain here and stay awake with me. And going a little further, he threw himself on the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, So could you not stay awake with me one hour? Stay awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, he went away for the second time and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, you will be done. Again he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? See, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. As Jesus prayed in the garden, he was betrayed and abandoned by those closest to him. His grief overwhelmed him, and his disciples could not stay awake. Who in this strange and lonely time in our world feels abandoned? Who among our communities feels afraid? Who in our neighborhoods and churches is overwhelmed by anxiety? Are we willing to follow Christ into these places of pain? Christ, even as you knelt with a heavy heart, you offered yourself in love and yet your friends turned away. May we recognize the heart of all those who feel betrayed or abandoned. May we stay awake to the pain of loneliness and isolation. Though we are apart, may we have the faith to stay with Christ and reach out to one another in acts of selfless love.
Second station, Jesus is condemned to death. Matthew 27, verses 11 through 14, 24, and 26. Meanwhile, Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? You have said so, Jesus replied. When he was accused by the chief priests and the elders, he gave no answer. Then Pilate asked him, Don't you hear the testimony they are bringing against you? But Jesus made no reply, not even to a single charge, to the great amazement of the governor. When Pilate saw that he was getting nowhere, but that instead an uproar was starting, he took water and washed his hands in front of the crowd. I am innocent of this man's blood, he said. It is your responsibility. Then he had Jesus flogged and handed him over to be crucified. Jesus is condemned unjustly by those who did not understand him and by those who were frightened of what he did and said. Perhaps they sensed that this man could make a difference, that he could turn their world upside down. We continue to condemn people unjustly today. People are condemned because of the color of their skin, their gender, because they are born with a disability, the list is endless. There are also the people who have been justly condemned, who have been found guilty, served their sentence, and asked for forgiveness. Does our society really forgive, really believe that people can change, or do we continue to condemn them over and over again? Jesus, what a terrible injustice to see you condemned to death. The people, the Roman judges, and the soldiers didn't recognize that you were the Son of God. Give us the grace to see, respect, and love you in all people, both innocent and guilty. Change our hearts that we may see with new eyes those we might otherwise condemn.
third station, Jesus takes up his cross. From Mark 15, 16 through 20. Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace, that is, the governor's headquarters. And they called together the whole cohort. And they clothed him in a purple cloak, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him. And they began saluting him. Hail, King of the Jews. They struck his head with a reed, spat upon him, and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. There are burdens that we all carry. Some are very obvious, and others we take great care to hide. There are burdens of illness, pain and disability, of old age, dependence, and caring for someone who no longer knows who we are. There are burdens of constant fear, of loneliness, and of isolation. There are burdens of financial stress, a fractured family relationships, of expectations, and crippling anxiety. Tonight, we take time to remember and name the burdens we bear. What are we holding and who are we holding? The invitation of Jesus on the cross is to hand over these burdens to him. May we see your presence, Lord, in all the burdens we carry today. Help us to share our burdens more freely, not to be afraid to acknowledge our fears and our pain. May we be more aware of the crosses that others bear and make time to alleviate their burden. May your face shine on each one of us through the crosses we bear.
Fourth station, Simon helps Jesus to carry his cross. Mark chapter 15, verse 21. They compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Look at Jesus who lies hidden and unknown beneath every person in need. Across our world, we see human suffering in the faces of friends and strangers alike. We see the suffering of those dealing with grief or loneliness. We see the suffering of those longing for healing, those struggling for peace. We see the particular sufferings of our world in a time of pandemic and response. We also see those who give, them, give of themselves to care for the suffering of others. In the midst of so much pain, we see those who respond to suffering with generosity and love. Lord, help us to grasp our opportunities to be a Simon in our world. In those times when we can help, let us have the generosity to do so. May we continue the spirit of Simon in the work to alleviate suffering in our world. Lord, may we have the humility to accept all the Simons along our road who reach out to help us in our moments of need. Fifth station, Jesus speaks to the women. Luke chapter 23, verses 27 and 28. A great number of the people followed Jesus, and among them were women who were beating their breasts and wailing for him. But Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. Look at Jesus and listen to his message for us today. Weep for the children who are abused. Weep for those who are victimized. 
Weep for all who are separated by borders or walls. Weep for the young who cannot find a job or a way in life. Weep for the old who are forgotten. Weep for people who starve in the shadow of abundance. Weep for people who are homeless, in exile, or seeking comfort. Weep for them, and remember. Lord, open our ears and hearts to the suffering of all people in our world. Give us the generosity of spirit to recognize their pain, the courage to change the systems that place intolerable burdens on the most vulnerable and the compassion to support them. May our tears water the seeds of your coming kingdom. Station six, Jesus is stripped of his clothing. John 19, 23 through 25. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four parts, one for each soldier. They also took his tunic. Now the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top. So they said to one another, let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to see who will get it. This was to fulfill what the scripture says. They divided my clothes among themselves, and for my clothing they cast lots. And that is what the soldiers did. Look at Jesus. Look at the absolute indignity inflicted upon him by society. Jesus continues to be stripped of his dignity when we humiliate one another. When we hold or hoard too much for ourselves, while so many of God's children are vulnerable and exposed. Jesus is stripped again when children of God are portrayed as objects or tragic events are treated as entertainment. Forgive us, Lord for being an irreverent mob prying into people's lives. Forgive us for holding too much for ourselves. Let us never humiliate anyone. Let us leave judgment to God and commit ourselves to seeing and claiming the humanity of each of your children. May we commit ourselves to seeing that each of your children are clothed fed, and housed, and whole.
The Seventh Station Jesus is nailed to the cross. Mark chapter 15 verses 23 through 32 And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. And with him they crucified two bandits, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha, you who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, along with the scribes, were also mocking him among themselves and saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also taunted him. Jesus sacrificed himself on the cross so that we might be healed of all that separates us from God and each other. Each person must turn away from habits and patterns of sin in order to be transformed. It is easy to recognize an individual sin of racism when someone violates justice or fails to extend the love of Christ to others. But even people who want to live justly cannot escape the taint of racism. When we fail to speak out against these structures and reform them, our complicity cannot be ignored. Christ died on the cross for the sins of the world. Just as our sinful acts must be forgiven at the cross, so too our failures to act when it is our duty to act must also be forgiven at the cross. Racism and the structures of systemic racism must be confessed and transformed by our loving Savior. Savior, forgive us our sins we have committed and also for the sins of omission that allow injustice to persist. Help us to stand up to the structures of sin and become accomplices in the work of justice. Station 8, Jesus Dies on the Cross, Mark chapter 15, verses 33 through 39. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lema sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, listen, He is calling for Elijah. And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick and gave it to him to drink saying, wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was God's son. Jesus has breathed his last. And so we wait in the shadow and the silence of death. We remember this night all who have died, including more than 500,000 lives lost to a pandemic. We remember all who are mourning and especially those who have been separated in their time of pain. May God's presence fill and transform our grief and give us courage to care for one another in times of pain. Holy God, we shrink once again before the mystery of death. Comfort all who are mourning and grant them your peace. Bind up our broken hearts and hold them in the power of your eternal love that goes beyond the grave. We pray in the name of Jesus, the crucified one.
the ninth station, Jesus' body is placed in the tomb. Mark chapter 15, verses 42 through 46. It was preparation day, that is, the day before the Sabbath. So as evening approached, Joseph of Arimathea, a prominent member of the council, who was himself waiting for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for Jesus' body. Pilate was surprised to hear that he was already dead. Summoning the centurion, he asked if Jesus had already died. When he learned from the centurion that it was so, he gave the body to Joseph. So Joseph bought some linen cloth, took down the body, wrapped it in the linen, and placed it in a tomb cut out of the rock. Then he rolled a stone against the entrance of the tomb. Do not look away. Do not rush to remedy this violence. Do not carry on as if nothing is wrong. Grieve this. Mourn this. Sit with this. And if you cannot, sit and mourn with those who mourn. Grieve with those who grieve. Holy God, even in the face of death, you call us to peace. And yet we know that peace is not the absence of tension, but the presence of justice. May God's Spirit direct us to create the kind of justice that was denied Jesus on this day. May God call us to peace. Amen. If you have lit a candle as part of our service this evening, I invite you to extinguish that. We stand with those who watched and prayed in silence while Jesus breathed his last. We stand with all who have seen love crucified and buried. May Christ's love span the silence of these days and call us back again to the resurrection of